All right, welcome everyone. I'm so excited for you guys to meet uh, a good coach and friend of mine, Alaric Heck. And some of you may know him, some may not, but a lot know him as the YouTube guy. He started his YouTube channel when he was 12 and turned it into a multi-million dollar coaching program, helping entrepreneurs cut through the noise and attract their ideal clients through the power of video, one of the most powerful ways to connect with people online. His business ad outreach has been featured in the Inc. 500 twice, ranked the fastest growing company in Austin, and more importantly than his speaking, accomplishments, awards, is his desire to create positive impact in the communities he serves. And so I want to give a warm welcome to Alaric Heck. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me here, Jared. I'm so excited. This is going to be this is going to be awesome. <laughs> well, for those of you who for for those listeners who may not have heard you or listened to you before, could you kind of set the stage uh, and give them a little bit of your backstory and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, I started out on YouTube 14 years ago. It was totally different platform back then. That was back in. Uh, 2009, I was reviewing mobile apps, doing tech tutorials, teaching people how to use their iPhone for the first time. And those videos, you know, have millions of views. It's something I'm actually still proud of is, you know, having taught millions of people how to use their iPhone uh, for the first time. And so I remember, you know, creating those videos, growing that channel, it grew to about half a million subscribers. And one day, uh, you know, I had a particular app, a social media networking app. They, you know, paid me to do a video on the channel, a sponsorship. And we published the video, they get a bunch of downloads, like, this is great, but how can we get more people to see this video? And this is about eight years ago now. And I decided, well, what if we just run a YouTube ad to it? So we put $500 behind a simple YouTube ad and they drove over 11,000 users in just one week uh, from those YouTube ads I set up. And they were blown away. I was actually in college at the time. They called me up, they're like, all right, Alric, we want you to drop out, fly out here to Silicon Valley, join our team. You can run YouTube ads for all of our apps. And I turned it down. And instead, that's where I created Ad Outreach uh, eight years ago. And originally it was YouTube ads for mobile apps and of course expanding into businesses, which you know predominantly is serving a wide array of different uh, businesses. And also of course, you know having the pleasure of working with, uh, with Jared as well. I'm sure we'll, we'll touch on a little bit of that too, um, but really like working with businesses that help them use the power of YouTube ads to get more consistent leads and sales. And so, you know, since founding that, we've we've grown pretty rapidly, you know, grown our team to about 35 people. We've got our office uh, here in, in downtown Austin, Texas, and have worked with now thousands of businesses to help them learn how to use YouTube ads to get more leads and sales. What, Alaric, what were some of maybe the early challenges you faced when launching your business and, and how did you overcome them and what kind of lessons did you learn in that process? Yeah, so some of the early challenges that I had um, honestly, those challenges were figuring out, and, and, and I think within ad outreach, I think that's the, uh, that's a big area is figuring out, you know, how to actually delegate and bring people into it. So I think it's a lot of, you know, and I'll get into some of the, the later challenges here too. Um, but really it was being that person that always wanted just to do it all, wanted to do a lot of stuff. Uh, and also I pride myself in being able to go and pick something up and learn and do different things. And so I was being a lot of the different pieces of the business. And, um, you know, I remember hiring uh, Julia, who's my COO, and uh, she kind of goes even all the way back to some of those early uh, college days. We really kind of built things up together. She's in the office right next door to me over here in, uh, in, in, in Austin. But, um, you know, I think that hiring people early on and delegating and especially delegating things I was really good at. So that wasn't the operation. That was, that was easier. Okay. I need your help with this, but, um, but more so like marketing and sales and things that, you know, were in my wheelhouse and, you know, actually really letting other people go out and do these types of things. I think those were some of the challenges earlier on was, you know, delegating things, especially if there's a little bit of that curve, where, you know, I'm doing them better, but I know that I need to delegate to get that scale because there's only so much I can do as that business owner. What would you say, because that that's such great advice and I've heard you give me that advice too. What would you say for like smaller businesses that are just trying to like get to a place where they can get themselves to focus more on growth and get out of the do, da, daily do to, um, tasks? Like what would be the first thing they should be looking at to making a hire, you think? So I am definitely a big believer that you should hire 
uh, complementary skill sets, especially early on. Now, some people disagree with that and they say to pull yourself out of the things you're best at. I, I, I disagree with that. I think you should pull yourself out of the things that you're not as good at and bring people in that are great at those things. So for me, you know, I know that sales and marketing, that is a big skill set. Now, I understand the importance of really strong operations. Also, I love supporting clients and, you know, I still love, you know, diving in and, and helping our clients succeed. And at the same time, I also know that there's people that might have, you know, more like A to Z, like, all right, here is how we could be a little bit more patient, re-explaining the same thing multiple times. I like new and exciting and innovating new strategy or, you know, working with high level clients. And so I knew the first couple of things that I needed to hire for it, it was complementary skills. I knew sales and marketing made sense for me to continue to do. And then I hired for operations um, and pulled myself out of that. Um, and with that operations, that's where Julia came in and she was able to really make sure that everything was organized. I'm, you know, visionary entrepreneur. I like to create things quickly. If it was up to me. I would be doing a million different things. Um, but Julia makes sure we limit those things and we actually follow through and get, you know, the, the systems in place to repeat them. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, uh, it's also when it comes to, you know, the second hire, you know, big hire that I made was, uh, you know, another kind of person that can support on the, uh, training and client success side. Um, whereas, you know, I had all the pieces of our, here's what our clients need to do. Here's the YouTube ad strategy. I innovated all of that. When it came to directly integrating with clients, the thing that was also challenging for me was explaining the same thing over and over again. And so I wanted to hire somebody that loves to do that and mm -hmm. loves to take people and see that journey. And then that way I could focus on innovating the strategy and helping clients at a higher level um, while we had people kind of helping day to day. So those were the first couple hires I made. Um, and it, it actually it went down the path of, um, you know, what are... Uh, going from my least skill set to most skill set. So then I, you know, later on, I think actually hired some things within these categories, right? So more uh, client success people. Then I hired sales and then I hired out marketing last, which which is my highest skill set. Mm -hmm. So that's what I recommend is starting with the thing that you're maybe not as, um, that, that's just not your main core expertise and find somebody that loves that. Julia on our team loves operations. So it's perfect. I heard you give me advice once. I've always kept on to this. So I'd love for you to touch on this advice too for those listening. Um, don't make a decision based on where you are now. Look at where you want to be and make a decision for that. Could you touch on that for our group here? Yes, this is a really, really valuable point. I'm so glad that you, you, you know, still, still carry on to that. And I remember talking with you about that. A big thing that gets people stuck is making decisions based on where they're at right now, but not based on where they want to go. Because ultimately, the person you are and the business that you are for where you're looking to go is different. And the decisions that you're going to make are different. But if you keep making decisions for where you're at today, then you're going to get yourself stuck in a loop, right? If you hire the people that's going to help your business grow today, then you might not have the people you need to get your business where it needs to be tomorrow. If you spend the ad spend that generates the amount of leads that ge that generate the amount of book calls that generate the amount of sales, or maybe it's not book calls for people here, but maybe leads that brings people in the door to your business. Um, you know, if you do that today, then you might not get the influx, the growth that you want tomorrow. You need to actually make decisions based on where you want to go. So the trap people fall into, I'll use a very simple example. Let's say you have uh, two uh, to, you know, employees in these couple areas. And, and some of you might be beyond that. Some of you might be still ramping up. But let's say you've got a couple employees, but you know where you want to go. Let's say you want to double the business. You know, you're going to need four, right? Same thing with ad spend. Let's say right now you're spending $3,000 a month on ads, but you know, which is generating, let's just say it's generating uh, 30 uh, appointments. And then from that, you're generating maybe 10 new clients, but you know you want 20 new clients. Well, then you know you're going to eventually need to spend $6,000. Now, obviously you can Im improve ads. We could talk about ad strategy, maybe switching from Facebook over to YouTube. We'll talk about the benefits of YouTube. And that's another shortcut people can do. But let's just say you're not changing that. If you're ramping it up, then you might know you need to spend $6,000 on ads to generate 
those 60 calls to generate those 20 clients. Now, it doesn't mean you have to turn the dial all the way. What if you just hire that next employee? So you go to three, knowing you want to get to four. Maybe you take, uh, take your ads up to 4,500, knowing you want to get to 6,000, right? But you have to make that decision first. And I'm using just simple numbers here because that's what's going to set you on the path. You can't just do the same thing over and over again and expect magically to leapfrog to where you want to go. You do need to make those decisions based on where you're looking to go. And by the way, increasing efficiency is another decision. Maybe you get there by increasing efficiency, and that is a path as well. That said, it's still looking at where do I want to go? Where's the gap? And how do I close that gap? And mm -hmm. that, I think, is the key. It's you're not just going to get there without making the decisions based on where you want to go. That's awesome advice. Thank you. Kind of going back a little bit, could you share a specific moment or experience that taught you a valuable lesson about entrepreneurship that you still hold on today? Yeah. So I think a really valuable, Ooh, oh, there's so many. There's so many. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I think a really valuable lesson um, that I got, uh, and this was actually, and I, I remember telling you about this, you know, uh, over from uh, Jay Abraham. Uh, I was at the Paris like mastermind uh, and this was, and talk about a ritzy place. I was, we were at the Ritz Carlton Paris um, and, you know, and it was also in the fall. It, it was all like kind of, you know, perfect out there. I was staying at the time I was staying at the Hilton down the street because, you know, it was uh, Ritz Carlton Paris, I think it was like four or $5,000 a night. But anyways, I was rolling up there. This was back in 2019. I was you know, walking in like, oh my goodness, there's gold everywhere. And I, I went in and I remember, you know, this was an experience of being in a room where a lot of the people who had businesses that were bigger and more established, you know, than mine. And I think that also this goes to show anybody who's here on this call, you're all here learning from Jared, right? You're learning from people that have built and can help you implement these types of things. There's such a value in mentorship and having people. And, you know, Jared's gone through, you know, our, you know, kind of uh, process. We've got our Ad Astra and Platinum, you know, programs and stuff where we help with YouTube ads and business. And I think that like, it's always finding mentors that are kind of ahead of you. So anyways, that's not the main lesson, but um, that's what I found in, in Jay. And so I was there at this event. There's also some other consultants there too. Um, and uh, I had uh, the opportunity to get a 20 minute hot seat. And uh, I remember I was so excited because I um, had recently ramped up the business a little bit more. This was back in 2019. And I was spending um, about uh, $25,000 on ads and bringing in around 200,000 was kind of fluctuating, but around that 200,000. And so pretty strong return on ad spend around that, like, you know, eight, uh, you know, nine X return on ad spend. And I remember the interesting thing that Jay asked me was why not spend more? <laughs> and, and I thought about like, well, that's what we're spending right now to generate this. And that's what we did. He, he said, well, what would happen if you spent 40,000? I was like, well, or no, 50,000, 50, which is like kind of double that, that 25. Well, what would happen if you spent 50,000? I said, well, you know, I mean, we would, we would generate more revenue. And he's like, well, let's actually go walk through it. Let's walk through an exercise. Let's play out your, you know, most likely best case scenario and most likely minimum case scenario. Uh, he might've called it worst case. I don't like to use worst case because, you know, but like, Let's just say, you know, what's what's kind of the 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 potential best case and what's kind of like a minimum case, right? Like if it doesn't go according to plan, right? And we mapped out, okay, well, best case is we double the revenue. We go from 200 to 400,000. And, um, you know, when we go up to 50K. But I also said, there's a degree of diminishing returns. So that's a little bit less likely, but that's like best. And he's like, well, what's a minimum case? Let's just say, it really doesn't go according to plan. You put an extra 25K into ads. I said, honestly, I can't see us doing anything less than making $50,000 more from that. So 250K total, right? Just still a 2X return. And then he said, well, what's what do you think is going to happen? I said, honestly, it's probably going to be somewhere maybe around like 100,000 more, like 300,000, just because I did know there was a reason I was spending that amount. There was a degree of diminishing returns over it. And so, so he said, okay, let me get this straight. You right now are spending $25,000 a month on ads and you're bringing in 200,000. 
And what you're telling me is you've mapped out the scenarios of spending an extra 25,000. So what you're looking is potentially you've got 25,000, right? And you're telling me that best case you make 200,000, most likely you make 100,000 and your minimum case is 50,000. And honestly, the absolute worst case is you lose the 25,000. But you know what you have? You have a case of risk arbitrage where you're potentially risking 25,000 that you're not even telling me you're risking. You're telling me most likely, even if it doesn't go to coordinate plan, you'll still make money from that. So you're not really risking anything. But he said, honestly, though, let's just say you lose that whole amount. That's 25,000, but you stand to potentially make maximum 200 and you think it's going to be 100. And even if it doesn't go according to plan, you're telling me you, you double your money. I would take those odds any day. And, and he said, obviously, in different ways, because, you know, Jay has like kind of this, this, this great kind of uh, way about him, definitely more eloquent than I said it here. But that was a really defining moment where I thought about, you know, ultimately, and there's a great book on this too, Thinking in Bets. But ultimately, when you're like in business, what you're doing is there's a lot of these kind of bets that you're making right? You're making a decision. You're seeing what the outcome is going to be. You're deciding where, you know, what you want to do. And ultimately, you know, if you are faced with a situation where you have a great best case scenario that far outweighs your, you know, minimum case scenario, then that's a bet that you should take. And I think that that's a really valuable piece of advice. And you know what I did after that over the next year, um, you know, scaled up the business over four times. And we ended up over the course of that was in 2019. By the end of 2020, you know, we had scaled, uh, we had about 4x the business, and then we doubled the business again going into 2021. <laughs> and and so ultimately that led to a lot of rapid growth and where you see, you know, things on the Inc. 5000 list. And, you know, and it's not always like that. Right now, it's not as simple as dial up the ads because now at a certain level, when you get to like eight figures, there's more things with your team. And also there's a certain degree with your offers and retention and recurring. And those are new lessons that I'm learning. And I always love being open about that. There's so much I don't know. But one big thing that I did learn about scaling and growth is risk arbitrage. And that was a very valuable lesson. That's amazing story. And thanks for sharing that. I do remember that. And I've used that now as a model in how I think about things in my own business. I think the interesting thing that I've learned also from you, Alaric, is you have to think about things differently to go through growth. And one of the things you teach a lot about is the entrepreneur mindset. Would you t share what that is for you to our audience as well? Oh, thank you so much, Eric. And, and the entrepreneur's mindset is really, really valuable. And it's honestly something that I have had for a long time. But now that I've put a word behind it and I teach it and I inspire other people to adopt it, it's really something that I live by. I really encourage our team to live by. I call it entrepreneur's mindset, but for our team, you know, it's, I want all of us to have that entrepreneurial mindset. And then for all of you as entrepreneurs, I really want you to have and adopt this. And it goes hand in hand with the risk arbitrage I just talked about. I'll explain that in a second. But essentially what the entrepreneur's mindset is, is in every single decision you make, it results in an outcome that's going to move you forward. It's either going to be a win and a success that you can double down on and build up, or it's going to be a learning lesson that you can learn from and adapt and do things better the next time. And so essentially it looks at every decision that you make allows you to progress further, even if it looks like you had a setback or you made a mistake or things pulled back a little bit, as long as you learn from that lesson, then you can compound that to see growth. And so essentially every decision that you have, it's either going to be a win and a success that you can learn from that success and learn what to do again, or it's going to be a learning lesson of what didn't work. And then you can iterate and change and now flip that into something that you can use to have be a building block for future wins. And I, I know that I have people ask me, well, what if I have a really big mistake or a failure, you know? What I would say is there are really two true failures. The first is the ultimate failure, right? This is the failure to continue. This is to give up. And this is to give up when you have a goal and a mind you know, set. Doesn't mean I'm not talking about pivoting. If you decide that you want to pursue something different, that's a different thing. But if you truly give up, you decide to go you know, and stop that, you're in complete control over whether you give up or not. 
right? So that's the first true failure. The second true failure is the failure to learn. This is the more insidious one because this is where you're potentially destined to repeat your mistakes. And this is why people don't grow from that entrepreneur unless they adopt something like an entrepreneur's mindset. Because what a lot of people do is they see successes, they learn from successes, they do more of it, but then they have a lot of mistakes and challenges. And the reality is most of the, a lot of the tests that you do, right, are going to either be neutral or potentially be a mistake. And then you'll have some home runs. But those mistakes, if you learn from them, you'll make less of them, right? And then that way you have more wins. So the people that you see winning more than they're losing are people that have actually gone through a lot of those learning lessons themselves and compounded them. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, I'm sure Jared can too, and every single person on this call, we're all exactly the same. We've all faced challenges, mistakes, things that we can learn from and use to grow. And so I think it's really important that we look at that and we say, okay, how can I avoid those two true failures and actually learn from any mistake? And then was it really a failure if you learn from it? Not necessarily, right? Because it might just be a piece of doing business that's going to teach you what you need to do next. And that doesn't mean going out and seeking mistakes. You always want it, which, which again means that you wouldn't be learning if you're trying to seek it out. You want to seek out the winners. And naturally, there's going to be some challenges that you face. And if you learn from those, then you're less likely to take that path in the future and more likely to stack more wins on the other side of the table. And so ultimately, the entrepreneur's mindset is to see everything as a win or a learning lesson. And when you look at it that way, ultimately that also means speed of decision and going out and doing more is going to always help advance you if you're always learning. Because the more tests you do, the more you learn what works and what doesn't work. And that's how you can compound what does work. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Probably now I would like to take a little turn on this. And since we're talking to the YouTube King here, will you share us with this group, the power of YouTube and how that can make sense for like a local business leveraging YouTube today? Absolutely. So there is a big power in leveraging uh, YouTube and YouTube ads. And ultimately, you know, YouTube is where people are going when they're looking to learn, right? They're in the learner's mindset. On Facebook and other platforms, again, there are, you know, benefits to different platforms, but with Facebook, people are kind of scrolling, right? They're kind of scrolling by, you might interrupt them and they might click on it, but it's not necessarily them actually looking and learning. On YouTube, they're going and they're typing in, okay, how do I do this? Or what's the best thing for that? Um, and ultimately, uh, and I see somebody on, I'll just use this as an example. I see, uh, I think uh, Fuzion has, it says driving school. So it makes it easy. I'll use that as an example. It's it's good to see, see you here, Fuzion. Uh, and uh, and so, um, and forgive me if I pronounced that incorrectly, somebody who also has a unique name, uh, you know. Uh, but anyways, um, let's say that you're, you're looking to advertise what you're doing with um, YouTube ads. Well, there's probably people looking up right now on YouTube and on Google you know, how do I pass the driving, you know, exam? Like, how can I find, you know, how can I learn, uh, you know, to, uh, to take the driver's test? Like, how do you parallel park? All those different things. You also could have people searching on Google and you know, you know, and that's one of the big things that Jared helps you with is optimizing your, your Google My Business profile. Um, people are searching for you on Google. They're also searching for content on YouTube. What you could do is you can reach people, whether they've searched on YouTube or on Google, you can reach them on YouTube. There's a certain type of YouTube ad called a custom intent audience where we can target people on YouTube based on recent Google searches. We can also target them based on what they're searching for on YouTube and overall what they're interested in. We can even target people based on in-market audiences where we say this, we want to reach people in the market for, uh, you know, driving schools, drive, you know, driver's ed, whatever it happens to be. And so ultimately what we can do is reach people on YouTube who are looking up things around drive, you know, driving schools or driving education on Google or watching those types of videos on YouTube. And then we can reach them next time they appear on YouTube with an ad that appears in front of a video, hooks them and captures their attention. So the first step is the hook, it pulls them in. You then educate and talk about why your driving school is going to be better, right? How it has a better, you know, rate of success on the exams and all the different benefits that you have. And, you know, again, you would know that for your business. And then a call to action at the end to get them to click the link at the end to take action. And so it's the same thing 
regardless of what type of business it is. Um, I remember working with a local business that did um, uh, that had a Brazilian barbecue business uh, back in Massachusetts near where I used to live. Uh, I'm here in Austin, Texas now, but I used to be back in, in the Boston area. And, um, and we worked with, I remember Rodrigo, and he's still running his YouTube ads to this day. But back then we used to hook everything up to like our own like accounts and stuff. And so, you know, some of the early, uh, you know, I can, we can see some of that, but anyways, um, but basically we helped him set up ads for the relaunch of his Brazilian steakhouse um, that included a free appetizer, right? Uh, when they come in and those ads are really successful because it had a bunch of B-roll showcasing the Brazilian steakhouse. It has a call out. It first says, you know, um, we want to invite you to our Brazilian steakhouse in and then the name of the city. Hmm. And then you only target around that area. How often do you see ads on YouTube that are for your local city? Probably not a lot. A lot of the ads are more broad. So that in of itself is a hook and a pattern interrupt for a local business. So you call that out, you know, um, here's like, uh, uh, we we're doing our grand reopening of our Brazilian steakhouse here. And I think it was Medford, but I, I could be incorrect. But anyways, you know, um, and, uh, and to celebrate, we want to give you a free appetizer with any entree purchase. We're so excited to have you out here. And, you know, we've been cooking up great food, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And it shows a bunch of B-roll and all of this. And then it gives them the link to go and click and get the coupon and then they can track that through the coupon. And so ultimately, that's the type of ad that most other restaurants aren't going to be running. Most other drivers, driving schools aren't going to be running that. And ultimately, you get to be on the cutting edge because people are now just diving into Facebook, right? Google search, that's been pretty entrenched locally now. People are just diving into Facebook. You get to be on the cutting edge on YouTube where most local businesses don't live. And that's an opportunity for you, especially to call out the city at the beginning. That's one big thing with local ads is to call out the city at the beginning of the ad. Great tip. Thank you for sharing that. I was going to ask another on that kind of creating the ad um, idea for a local business owner who's like, man, I, I don't know how to create a good video or the production needs to be spot on. Like what kind of tips would you have to create an effective video for someone who may not have a big production ability or may be a little nervous to be on camera? Yeah. So you don't even need big productions or big cameras or all of that. And I, I know like, you know, this is one of the, the things, you know, that, that, that we dove into early on Jared as well as like, basically all you need is your iPhone camera and a gimbal. Think about the ads that you, you know, if you came in to Jared's, you know, business through a YouTube ad following the, the, the strategy we're talking about, you know, it's a simple, simple YouTube ad setup. And what you can do is you can take the camera. These cameras have a really good, uh, or these iPhones have a really good camera these days. And then you attach to a, a tool called a gimbal that you could buy on Amazon, $100 to $150. You can look it up. It's just a uh, gimbal, G-I-M-B-A-L, gimbal. It's like iPhone gimbal. And then you hook it up there and it just stabilizes it. So if your hand's moving, it doesn't, it's not shaky. The camera already has a great camera, already a great microphone. If you're going to be outside, use AirPods or something because the wind with the, with the regular microphone, sometimes it can affect that. And then there you go. You can record a video and the hook include the, the city, include something exciting about your business and what you're offering. If there's a special promotion to educate, why are you the best? What do you have to offer? Show some B-roll. And then call to action. This is for specifically local business. This is going to be different if I'm talking about coaching business, things like that. Uh, and then and then the call to action at the end is getting them to take action from that ad. And, you know, whatever your special promotion call to action happens to be, um, you know, recommend collecting lead, uh, a lead though, and not just having people call a number, not just having people go to, you know, your um, main website. I would send people to a lead form so you can capture their name, email, phone number, and then reach out to them and say, hey, I saw you're interested in our driving school or I saw you interested in this. I'd love to have you come in for a consultation. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, Alaric, what, um, I, I know you're a wealth of knowledge and, and always recommending books. Uh, for our group with a local business, do you have any particular books or resources that you might recommend and why? Ooh, that's a great, ah, oh, that's a great question. Oh, okay, for local businesses specifically, well, I mean, there's there's definitely 
kind of the classic books. So I'm trying to, okay, well, I do really like uh, Psycho Cybernetics is really good to open your mind to what's possible and really expanding beyond um, the main business itself. So that's a really kind of scientific way of thinking about building and creating the world that you want to to build. Um, I don't know with local business, again, like I'm a big believer in, 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 in all, all of Simon Sinek's books are great. So actually for local businesses, I would start with the start with why if you haven't read it yet. Um, it's a really, really powerful book that really helps you create like the why for why you're building your business, why you do what you do. And you probably heard Jared share, you know, his why. And it's actually very similar to what our why is. And that's probably why, you know, we're, we, 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 we blend so well together here. Um, but, you know, our mission at Ad Outreach is to empower businesses to amplify their impact and create a ripple effect on the world. And I know, Jared, you have a very, very similar mission to that, helping local businesses. Yeah. And, you know, ultimately, I got a lot of clarity on the why behind, you know, why I do what I do um, through, you know, going through and reading Start With Why. There's also uh, an activity kind of one that you can do, which is find your why. So it's kind of an add-on book. So if you're looking for more help, he also has some courses online too. Uh, but those two books are really valuable. The Infinite Game is a really great book. And I would say that's a great one. If you, Let's say you're starting to think about franchising, right? And local businesses, that could be your next big step. And again, you know, Jared is going to be the person to help local businesses. I work with a lot more online businesses, but I'm excited to share my expertise and knowledge here. But, um, you know, maybe that next step for you is franchising or building something. If you're looking and saying, okay, what's next? How can I build something bigger? The Infinite Game is going to be really impactful for you too. And then also just the tried and true, you know, even though it's like such a common recommendation, it's one of my favorite books is How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's just, you know, that's, it's a transformational book that I love to return to. And, uh, and that's just how I love to show up as, as a, you know, person and, and, and business owner. So oh, those sure. are a few books that I would recommend. I think probably the best for this audience though, is to start with why. Because I can tell you, most local businesses aren't reading that book. They aren't focused on their why. They aren't focused on their mission and what they're looking to do. And if you have a local business with a mission, people can feel that. The same way you can feel that Jared has a mission to help all of you, you know, like people can feel if your local business has a mission, right? And you are here to create that. And you you have that in the culture. You have that in the drinking water for your team and also for your clients. That's awesome. Thank you for that advice. I'd love to open it up for the group. If you have any questions for Alaric you'd like to touch on, go ahead and raise your hand. I will open up your mic and uh, share some questions and have a little dialogue. Awesome. Yes, Charles. Uh, Colin here. Yes. Hey, Colin. How are you? Great. I've, I've seen Alaric a lot on um, YouTube. And he's, he's saying he's constantly sending those those videos, the videos ads. <laughs> but my you. question, my question, Alaric, uh, do you have a course specifically for local businesses to help local businesses uh, advertise on on YouTube? So that's a great question, and we have a generalized course that I think is mm -hmm. going to be valuable and will help uh, with local businesses as well. Our main program is not designed specifically for local businesses. So I think that's right. a, a valuable insight there. That said, we do have a course that will walk you through how to run YouTube ads that can apply to local businesses. And it's not at the same investment level that our uh, coaching program is. And so what I would recommend is looking at our all access uh, membership. Um, and I can send a link to that. Um, and I'll, I can drop that here in the chat. That's what I would recommend uh, for you would be our all access membership uh, for local businesses. Uh, by the way, I also have a, a PDF gift for everybody else here as well. So I'm going to drop both of these links and then I'll keep answering any other questions that you have. Um, I think Colin, sorry, sorry if I thought it was the, uh, you know, the, the <laughs> Fusion, but yes, it's a Colin. Fusion, Fusion. 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 Oh, <laughs> yes. So much better. I love it. Fusion. Sorry about that. Sometimes when you're here live on Zoom, you're trying to like do do a few things at once. So I appreciate that. I understand. That. I understand. All right. Thanks. So thanks much. Thanks much for your time and the response. Yeah, you got it. This is what I would recommend for you. And this is also the discounted link. So if you go to this one, um, it's, uh, I think, uh, 
like two thirds off. Uh, so this is like a, a special link for you guys. You're all part of Jared's uh, community here. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be probably the best way to dive in and start building something like this for a local business. Now, if okay. you're, it, you know, um, people that have coaching, consulting, things like that, if that happens to be anybody here listening to that, that would be where, you know, booking a strategy call would probably be the best fit, which would be uh, at outreach.com slash apply. But if you've got a local business, I'd recommend our all access, which covers YouTube ads for a wide variety of different types of businesses. Um, and that's going to be the best for you. And then for everybody else, uh, I also have um, a free gift and it's just at outreach.com slash gift. And this is my 19 page YouTube ad strategy uh, PDF. It's going to walk you through step by step um, how you can use YouTube ads to get more uh, leads and sales. You'll notice it does say, uh, you know, kind of coaching, consulting on there, but it will cover the main YouTube ad strategies. This is the other funnel that kind of leads in for coaching businesses, but it'll cover kind of the still the still the the high level inside of a PDF. But if you guys want to learn how to run YouTube ads for a local business, that's going to be all access, which is um, the link I posted here. I think it's at outreach.com slash join dash all dash access. So both of those should be in the chat. Thanks for sharing that. I'll give, I, I'm sure this is okay, but you good if I post that into our community as well as a re, with this replay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Great. Thank you for that question, Colin, too. Any other questions? Who else would like to bring a question to Alaric? Colin, I see Antra here. Hey, Antra, good to have you on the call. Irina, Cassandra, good to have you guys. Any other questions for Alaric right now? All right, maybe All right. not. I, I, oh, I guess ahead, I'll, take, I'll, I'll take another one. Uh, concerning uh, making those videos, Alaric, uh, within the course, would, you, would they also teach you how to make those videos that you talked about? Yes. So it'll walk you through exactly how to film the videos. It'll give you what we recommend for that gimbal, the iPhone. Uh, there's also some teleprompter apps that you can use. When it comes to scripting, we'll walk you through exactly how to script out and add the different components, the hook, educate, call to action. Um, awesome. and, and of course, how to target that ad in front of different people. And we talk about inside of the course, here's what you do for local businesses. Here's how to target within a certain geographic region um, and all of that. Awesome. Thanks. You got it. Good. Yeah, and Colin, I've I've started from the very beginning on this. And so I think uh, the way you found me was exactly what Alaric taught me how to do. <laughs> yes, I, you that's, can that's... actually use that as kind of like a frame of mind of what this could look like, but tailored to your business too. Beautiful, beautiful. That's good. One of the one of the things you made me um remember, Al Alaric, is talking about producing a video, and because you're you're bringing it up to Colin is one of my best videos that I've done on YouTube is literally me sitting inside my truck, holding my camera, talking to it. And uh, I've had people comment like, wow, it really was very low key. It felt very organic, natural. And I think in a lot of ways that has actually made it convert even better. So exactly. That's sometimes what you see is it'll convert even better by having that natural ad because people are drawn to it and it feels authentic and it feels like the platform. It feels like YouTube. And I think that that's uh, definitely a really big piece of it too. So, it's awesome. Great. Any other questions to, to bring up from the group? If we don't have any other questions. That's all right. Well, I'll, Alaric, I wonder if you have any last thoughts you'd like to share with the group before we close down the, uh, the live. Awesome. Well, it's so great uh, having everybody on here. And I also just want to say, you know, how... Uh, it, it's it's so amazing that all of you get to to work here with with Jared. And I can tell you, you know, spending spending a lot of time with him, and he's been out here to our offices. I know that Jared's heart is really, really big and really amazing, and he's really focused on that impact. And so I'm so excited with all of you, right? If you're any reflection of what you know, what I know of Jared, uh, I'm I'm excited, and it's really ama amazing to see other great people who are out there to create an impact. So uh, I just want to say that, um, and uh, you know, I definitely admire. Uh, admire you know Jared who you are and I'm excited to see everybody else here who is going out there and really building up your local business creating an impact and you know looking to to do that and um and so the last thing I'd probably say is 
you know, I would encourage you to dive into YouTube ads. I know, you know, if, if you've seen uh, like Colin, you know, some of our uh, ads before, you know, a lot of the coaching clients that we have are more on the coaching consulting kind of course based space, similar to, you know, what, uh, what Jared is doing. That said, when it comes to our course and our all access membership, one of the reasons we launched that is to help businesses like yours that are local businesses looking to run YouTube ads. There's a big opportunity for all of you right now to use YouTube to get in front of people who are looking for businesses like yours. And at a time when, you know, Google search ads are getting more and more kind of saturated, people are just discovering Facebook, but there's obviously a lot of benefits over YouTube and not many local businesses are using it, I think is a big opportunity for those of you that want to seize it. So I encourage you to do that. And I'm looking forward to seeing where you go from here. Thanks for sharing that. And and by the way, uh, as you are all part of this community, uh, if you, I'm not the YouTube expert, but I have been part of Alaric's program for three years and I've learned from the master himself. So if you dive into that program and have any questions about how you can tailor that for your specific local business, just reach out to me. You're in the community. So I'll be happy to give you some pointers too. <laughs> Alaric, is there, I think you've given us the links, but I was just going to ask one other really important thing. If anyone wants to reach out to you or your team, where should they go? Is it the links that you sent us or is there any other place that you would recommend? Yeah. So one more link that I would do, and this is if you're interested, potentially doing a strategy call. And this would be if you are in the spot where you can commit, you know, $5,000 a month towards your ads, I would book a strategy call. You don't need to do or towards your ads plus our training, right? Kind of combined. Um, if you're in that spot, you could book a strategy call. If not, you don't need to start there with the program. You can start, you know, as little as, you know, $25 a day with some of these campaigns, um, you know, and all access will be a good fit for you, but also drop our link for adoutreach.com slash apply. Uh, if you're in that spot where you are looking to really scale, uh, if you happen to have a coaching consulting course-based component, or, um, you know, maybe you're a franchise and you're, you know, or a bigger local business that can kind of allocate around $5,000 a month to spend, then it would make sense for us to hop on a strategy call and go to adoutreach.com slash apply. That said, that's not how much you need to spend if you start off on your own. Our all access membership, like I said, is at that lower price point. And, uh, and you also have the ability to start with a small you know, $25 a day campaign. So um, check that out. And you can also go to adoutreach.com slash gift for a free PDF as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alaric. This is so fun jumping on and being able to share this conversation with all of you in the group. Um, we're going to go ahead and close the event now. Alaric, if you don't mind staying on for just a moment longer, we'll connect. And guys, if you need, have any follow-up questions, uh, let me know in the community and I will be posting this as a replay for anyone who's missed it. Thank you, guys. Thank you.